This Easter, if you want to stop an Amiga suffering, please have your mobile ready. Every day, this Amiga struggles in the scorching heat, just so that that owner will look at them again. This Amiga was simply abandoned, left to rot as the inside slowly leaked their corrosive fluids over the delicate traces. Unless somebody is willing to help them, if you care about Amigas like these, then please text SAVE AMIGAS to 555 555 today to give three pounds to the cave this Easter. We have been saving Amigas for nearly four years. Your three pounds could save Amigas like this one, found abandoned in a skip in Glasgow. Or this one that had been raped for parts to sell on eBay at inflated prices. Just three pound will make sure that they have a life worth living. It will enable us to kickstart them into life, ensuring that they can show a hand on startup. No Amiga should be left to suffer like this. Find it in your heart to text SAVE AMIGAS to 555 555 to give three pounds. That's 555 555 for just three pounds and save the life of a little Amiga today. Oh, Richard. That was a little treat from Richard, by the way, that video. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> oh. Dry your eyes, dry your eyes everyone. It was hard to get through that one I know. Good evening everyone. Uh, good evening Mumbo, Johan, Alan, Dave, Retro Box Room, Matt, Reese. hello everyone. I saw a lily hiding in there. The Himble, the Pillock. Why do I suddenly feel like I need a Scotch Egg? I think there may have been some subliminal messages in that last video. <laughs> it does get stranger by the day. Um, Necronom, Derek at Flame Lily IT, hello everyone, I'm Mad Pete. Mad Pete, who I see is streaming again at 8.30pm on Saturday, so um, is it Saturday or Friday? I can't remember when you're streaming. But um, he's moving on to the Chaos Engine. If he plays that half as well as he plays Turrican, it'll be well worth the watch. So, um, it's stream time, which means it's time for my first beer of the evening. I hope you've got yours. After yesterday, which was a bit quiet, <clears throat> but then the inbox flooded during the show, so we did have lots to look at, we've got a ton of stuff today. So uh, there will be no late submissions, I'm afraid. Anything late we'll have to pick up on Monday. Even what I've got, we can't squeeze everything in. I don't think we can. So let's just make a start and let's have a look at what we've got. Um... I'm going to start you off with my choice of L game. I don't know if anyone else has chosen this. I'm just going to bring up a walkthrough on the old uh, YouTube. Oh yeah. We're going to get some audio. It's Leisure Suit Larry 3, Passionate Patty in Pursuit of the Pulsating Pectorals. Uh, this looks like it's gone through Scum VM and it's been sort of upscaled in a bit of an odd way. So it looks a bit different. But who else? Who had this? Tell you a terrible story. When I was, I don't know, I must have been about 13. I got my mum to buy me this for my birthday. What do you want for uh, your birthday, Neil? Oh, Mum, can you buy me Leisure Suit Larry 3 Passionate Patty in Pursuit of the Pulsating Pectorals? Okay, son, if that's what you want. God knows what she thought when she was wrapping it. Um, and then I went on to write an English paper at school on the Leisure Suit Larry series and got an A star for it. <laughs> Again, it must have been purely out of sympathy. The teacher must have thought, what is going on in this guy's head? Uh, yeah, let's let's just let's not make things any worse. Give him an A star. 
<sighs> we're gonna see any of the game let's fast forward a little bit well you know what it is it's your classic sierra point and click adventure game with that terrible owl low um humor in there who i had the pleasure of interviewing not so long ago on a retro tea break it was amazing to get to speak to owl low but my advice to you is not to follow him on twitter his humor hasn't aged well <laughs> he's making oh, terrible terrible jokes on twitter all day long <laughs> um it just makes me cringe um and a lot of leisure suit larry hasn't aged well but you know it, it it was what it was at the time so there we go that's my choice of our game so let's bash through some more um, some of the early ones that came in we've got Chris uh, yeah Chris 005 Agima which we now know is Amiga 500 backwards uh, oh he sent a video in we are on the letter L aren't we yes we are H-I-J-K-L yes I was getting confused there I, I thought we'd had Lotus before for some reason <laughs> they're the best kind of folk to follow on Twitter says Grant the ones that make you cringe. I guess I'm cringing at their expense. So that's okay. Yeah, you're right there. The ones that make you cringe because you're like, no, th this is not good. And, and, and people are then commenting and saying, what? this is a brilliant post. Not a good cringe. Usually to do with politics. Anyway, we've got tape measures. We've got a classic pair of 90 speakers. I think everyone had a pair of them at some point. Um, Amiga 500 and Lotus. Lotus is an awesome game. It, it's come up in discussion many times over these vlogs just because of what a great game it is. Oh yeah, you're right, Pillock. Um, isn't there a, there's a sample, isn't there, in the intro music, and if you reverse the sample, it says, you will not copy this game. Subliminal anti-piracy. Probably as effective as any other kind of piracy method. And of course, this Amiga 500 has got something all Amiga 500s need. A webcam. <laughs> not sure what that's plugged into. Oh, two joysticks, yeah. There's a stealth one there. Uh, did you ever play Rockstar Ate My Hamster, says Play It Cool? Yes, I was obsessed with that game. I played it for months. Um, so Chris says, I got my original copy of Lotus on release and tried so hard to beat it uh, on hard level so that I could send off for my license. Lotus 2 came out and I clocked that in no time. Oh, I clocked that in no time at all. I returned to the original and eventually beat it. Sent off for my license, which came back in the post and really... It was just a dodgy A4 photocopy with my name in the middle. How disappointing. It didn't matter, it was mine and I'd earned it. Oh. That was cool, wasn't it? When you could complete a game and send off and get something physical back for it. And that was something that was always part of the Ultima games, which I bang on about too much. But even today, if you complete an Ultima game, no matter how old it is, and contact Richard Garriott, he will send you a you know, a certificate or whatever. And he's even got a thing in his book, his latest biography, where there's a little hidden thing where it's like, if you've completed this book, contact Lord British. <laughs> and he sends you a certificate. Uh, Mark says, Let's see Larry had the questionnaire at the beginning to detect children. I don't think that's aged well. No. Uh, yeah, you're right. It contained a lot of very current references. Um, and I'm pretty sure there was a key you could play, press to just skip it, wasn't there? But even if you didn't skip it, if you tried enough, you could soon get through it. What have we got next then? Demo is next. Control and X. There you go. So Demo has sent us L for the Legacy of Cain. He says my nomination for the best letter L games franchise. Uh, he's a slight liberty with the naming rules, but all under the Legacy of Kane series, amongst the best stories told in this medium. Thanks for your content. Thank you, Demo. Um, so we're going from PlayStation to PlayStation 2. Don't know a lot about this series. I think this is going to be my catchphrase. 
This looks good, I haven't played it. <laughs> Catchphrase of the series. It's going to happen a lot when it comes to console gaming. More of a PC and a micro gamer, but this looks good. Does the does the the series continue past the PlayStation 2? Oh, um, Reese says on the Dreamcast. There was a hidden duck hunt game in Lotus 2, says Bitter Blitter. I've not heard that one. You want that on a t-shirt? This looks nice, I haven't played it. <laughs> David's submission is... One for the catchphrase. Enhance, zoom, enhance. This looks nice. Who's played this? I bet there's a lot of you out there saying, this looks nice, I haven't played it. Collector's edition of Loki. Bit of a blurry picture, but it looks okay on the stream, I think. He says, hi Neil. David Whitley here. Thought I would send you a game for the letter L. The game is called Loki, an RPG based on Norse, Greek, Aztec, and Egyptian mythologies. All of them. All of them rolled into one there. The player must take on the role of a hero drawn from one of the four mythologies. The hero is plunged into the chaos brought about by Seth, the Egyptian god of chaos and the desert. The hero must pass through each mythology in pursuit of Seth before reaching the game's final showdown with Al Lo. No, that last bit I just tagged on. Um, anyone? Nulani, haven't heard of it. Uh, Castado, never heard of it. Pillock, Loki was the guinea pig in my video. Alistair, never heard of it. Yeah, so that is a uh, an oddity. And a collector's edition. I can't quite see because of the light there what you get in the collector's edition. What sort of game? It's an RPG apparently. Oh, is it? Is it not? It's a very low resolution um, picture. He was asking that, David. So don't do not adjust your TV sets. Next up is Grant with his choices of L. He says, "This is my entry for the L games on the RMC Diaries. I included oh, Little Big Adventure. What a choice!" He says, "Finally, a true and proper retro game. Uh, Lollipop Chainsaw." Luminous 2 or Lumins 2 and Lego DC Supervillain. Well, I think you can guess from my reaction which one stands out for me. Um, as interesting as Lollipop Chainsaw sounds, it looks absolutely brutal. Look, she's got some guy's head attached to her hip down here, which she's severed with her chainsaw. Um, oh, what was the name of the main character in Little Big Adventure? Help me out. Guy in the blue, uh, long blue top with the ponytail. We're not moving on until someone tells me. Come on, little big adventure. What was his name? What was his name? Twinson. Thank you. It wasn't Nigel Smithy. <laughs> Twinson. Yes. That's her boyfriend's head. <laughs> um. I think it did come as an OEM game. I can't remember what it was packed in as, or with, but I certainly got it packed in with something, and it was just really nice. It was pre-rendered 3D in an isometric adventure game that just worked really well. Sackboy was Little Big Planet, yes. No wonder I don't do well on quizzes. Um, next up is James' uh, submission. Another another picture round. We're getting a lot of pictures actually, so um, this might not be as full an episode as I thought. Just have a sip of my beer, bear with. Not to be confused with Big Red Racing, no. That ain't my finger. That ain't my belly button neither. Little Big Red Racing Planet Adventure. Hell of a mashup. So we've got here L4, Lord of the Rings. And I have this, but my copy's pretty beaten up. Pretty beaten up. Um, where's the front of it? There we go, this is the Spectrum version. 
the beer tonight is just uh, cause lights, nothing too fancy. No ale tonight, just a just a cold, refreshing cause. Um, 111 watching is that a record? No, we hit 200 the other day. So James has a very short note to go with this choice of game. He says the reason. Is there any reason needed? The box is amazing. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, Mumbo, I. If your email came today, then yes, I've downloaded it. Cause light. It's like making love in a canoe. <laughs> I know, Castado. I knew you'd be disappointed with the choice of beer tonight. I was keeping it quiet. Um, yeah, I've got the Amstrad version of this, which is pretty beaten up. But even in a beaten up state, I had to get it for the shelf. Lord of the Rings. Oh, let's close all these pictures. So many pictures. There we go. <laughs> Castado is absolutely repulsed by my choice of beer. Castado, what's your choice? What, what should I be drinking? Uh, Eshkatan, no, Lord of the Rings, the ZX Spectrum game did not come out before the book. <laughs> now here's a game I did expect to see. <clears throat> not only is it leaderboard, it's leaderboard executive edition. No, I never had the executive edition. That seems pretty fancy. Uh, Yano says, I'm not really into golf, but I just adore, adore leaderboard with its minimalist environment of empty land and water. Um, I'm not so sure the minimalist environment was out of choice. It was more out of technical limitations. Um, I bet there are a lot of people... <laughs> Grant, also disgusted with the beer. Um, I bet there's a lot of people in chat who are not into golf and were into golf games in a big way. Um, because, yeah, Executive Edition Pillock, I don't know what that means. Um, because sports like golf, like American football, like baseball, um, I just had no interest in them. But I played them to death on my computer. Why? Because a game's a game and the mechanics and rules of sport translate so easily into a video game, don't they? You know, if you don't have to come up with your own rules, you can just recycle a sports game's rules when making a video game. Um, then it's a lot easier. I don't, I don't think it contained a boss key. Where is your wallpaper from? Um, it's a very old Laura Ashley wallpaper, which uh, Lily, my other half, used to work there many, many years ago. Bought it when it was in the cheap bin with a staff discount and just kept it for about 10 years and we eventually put it up. Anyway, enough wallpaper chat. Yeah, so uh, games like this I played to death as well as Lynx 386, PGA Tour Golf, all of the golf games. Just loved it. Um, American football, uh, John Madden on the Amiga got absolutely hooked on John Madden and that's the only reason why I know the rules of American football. Basketball, used to play Magic Johnson on the Amiga. I'm not streaming from my granny's house. <laughs> um, you're buffering badly, are you? Is anyone else buffering or is it just Alistair? Or is it just the way I'm speaking? Laura Ashley, yeah, Alpha Laura Ashley. I didn't play the other 385 Lynx games. <laughs> Pixels, behave. Um, what other sports games? Magic Johnson, TV sports, basketball. The football wasn't great. Um, yeah, you guys were all good. Good, good, good. Yeah, and the only golf game I really play now is golf with your friends. Um, with everyone in Discord, which is mini golf. Um, I wouldn't even know. Uh, I'm sure EA Sports do whatever the current golf game is. Maybe I should give it a go. Because it's kind of relaxing, isn't it? But you can't make a golf game not relaxing. So it must still be relaxing to play. Ian Botham's cricket. <laughs> I 
Everyone's golf? Yes, I have seen that on the on the YouTubes. Um, okay, Mark has got a selection of games for us, so we're going to go through them. Oh no, it, it, yeah, it is a selection of games. Starting with another version of Leaderboard, which I haven't seen, Leaderboard Birdie. See, I just had straight up Leaderboard and World Class Leaderboard. The leaderboard Birdie seems to include Leaderboard and Leaderboard Tournament, which is lethally hard. How's that for some marketing? Lethally hard. Classic celebration of the greatest series of golf simulations ever produced, including two games, eight courses, unique freestanding hole guide, club length chart, and scorecards. Oh, there's Mark in chat. And notice it's by Access Software, who also did... Um... <laughs> this always happens. This always happens. I start a sentence. I can't remember the name of the damn developer or the damn game. Here we go. Under a Killing Moon, the Tex Murphy series. Um, and the Link series, of course, yeah. More relevant, a golf series. Hang on. Here comes the cat. Come on. Gizmo has entered the room. You right, mate? Good. Inside the box. Um, so, yeah, Mark said... Um, Leaderboard is my favourite. Reminds me when I was in my teens playing leaderboard with my father and two uncles. Good times. This email has been scanned by Bullguard Antivirus Protection. Thank you, Mark. And like, it looks like he's never used his scorecards. It's all pristine. And there's some more L games. Laserian. which looks like, I don't know, looks like they've put Liam Gallagher into an obelisk and are shooting him. <laughs> I nearly read you out a virus. <laughs> Luckily, Mark protected us. Um, checkpoint. Get ready. No, wrong one. Checkpoint. There we go. L for Le Mans, of course. Got to be some Le Mans game. Um, Oh, that's the same game over there. This game requires a joystick. £9.99 at WH Smith. You never hear Gizmo knock the door? I don't know where she's gone now. Oh, she's... Just sort of lying on the floor like a puddle. She's kind of tapping the door as if she wants to go out, but I know if I open it, she'll just want to come back in again. Yeah, being a cat. Just being a cat. The next L from Mark is Labyrinth, which doesn't look like it's the game of the movie. It's just a man stuck in a maze. And a spooky face, superimposed. Going to be honest, Mark, this one doesn't make me want to play it. But I do like your writing desk. Very nice. <laughs> it's amazing. Well done, Richard. What are you doing? Is it bat in the door? Can I go out? No. <laughs> Just going to push push the door closed if I open it. Okay, uh, the next L from Mark. Oh, it's your soldering desk. Looks too nice to be a soldering desk. L for license to kill. Now this I did have on my Amstrad. James Bond is out on his own and out for revenge. When is he not? When is he not? <laughs> you got it, Namkes. Uh, so those are Mark's selections. Thank you in the chat, Mark, for your choices. Next up is Nulani. Another picture. We, we have got some videos. <laughs> 
look at this we've got a game and watch we've got the longest journey which was a great um point and click adventure game and we've got alpha lifeboat and i really love the form factor of this one it's a square rather than a rect rectangle which folds out to be a rectangle we have a multi-screen game Nulani has oh quite a bit of text here, so I'll just read it out. What's the picture on the mug? Um, <laughs> I wouldn't like to say. So they're having a cup of tea, so they look pretty happy. Hello, Neil. Finally, a letter I actually had something for readily available. Oh. Only a picture, I'm afraid. I don't have a fancy retro man cave mug yet, so I've had to substitute it with a... Oh, it's a Moomin's mug. See, they don't look like Moomin. I know the Moomins, but they don't look like Moomins to me. It's the Hafinatas. Okay. Um, the ha oh, it's in the text. I should have just kept reading. The Hafinatas are as terrifying as ever. Orange goes well with the game and watch. Lifeboat is my original from when I was a kid. Would probably have got it as a present at some point in 86, 87. Might have been purchased some years prior and hidden away somewhere waiting for when I wouldn't just gnaw on it. Its boxes survived too, somehow. It has, and there's a price on there of 298 I think that's Danish kroner. The Longest Journey is a Norwegian-made adventure game from the very end of the 90s. The English localization was finished in 2000. It's quite excellent and had a couple of sequels. Dreamfall, The Longest Journey in 2006. Dreamfall chapters between 2014 and 2016. My white half sphere, which is this thing over here, with the cat ears on, is the monitoring station for my cat's feeding bowls. Most excellent. What are Moomins, says Grant. Oh, Grant. Let me find you some Moomins. There you go, these are Moomins. They, they look a bit like hippos. <laughs> yeah, I was going to play a video and then I thought better of it. So thank you, Nulani. Very good choices. Um, right, we're into the videos now. We've got quite a few videos. Oh, we've got one that's just text, so I'll just read that out quickly. This is from Saint. I don't know if Saint intended to attach a picture, but there wasn't a picture attached. And he said, Lords of Midnight. So L for Lords of Midnight. Weird RPG or adventure game. I liked the simple graphics and the hook you in play. I did spend more time being killed than progressing. Lords of Midnight was an absolutely monstrous game. It was huge. I think it was, was it procedurally generated? To a degree, I don't know, but it was massive. It was by uh, Mike Singleton, uh, the late Mike Singleton, who for a spell Jim Bagley worked with. When I interviewed him, he uh, was very excited to work with him as a young programmer. Uh, but don't worry, Saint, if you did forget to attach a picture, because... <laughs> because here's a picture of leaderboard. That makes no sense. I, For some reason, I thought this is Paul Kitchen's choice. I thought Paul had chosen the same game. But um, I, obviously not. So there you go. Lords of Midnight Leaderboard Edition. <laughs> um, but this is the this is this is the leaderboard I remember. This is normal leaderboard. Oh, Paul is Necronom. Hello, Paul. Uh, Mem Mumbo, I will check. We I'm not doing them in any kind of order. Um, if yours doesn't come up, then uh, remind me and I'll dip back into the email to find it. Lords of Golf. Leaderboards of Midnight. This is the sports simulation of the year, if not the decade. Discuss. Was Leaderboard the best sports game of the 80s? Hmm... There's a lot to choose from. <laughs> the cassette says Leaderbard. 
and there's a Dunlop golf ball there. Very good, Paul. Thank you. Uh, will there be any more leaderboard tonight? Let's find out with Dave's video. Daily Thompson, that's a good shout. Now, we weren't going to get through the L's without lemmings, were we? This had to happen. This is from Dave. Let's see what he's got to say. Thank you, Neil, for that very, very kind introduction there. Hello, Cave Dwellers. Today, I'm going to talk about L games. Um, and I thought I would talk about what I think are super important games by someone called Julian Gollop. <laughs> These two games are not the first two games that he made. <laughs> I will try, Dave. But they're my... They're really... Is that meat? Have we got a box of meat in the background? Are, are we doing points for meat now? <laughs> really, really favourite games of mine. Um, the first that I played um, is Laser Squad. Great game. On Absolute the CPC. Classic. And then I played it again on the Atari ST. And I've played it lots of times since on the PC. It's a turn-based RPG-styled strategy game using uh, RPG rules, tabletop type rules, like action points and accuracy and so on. Everything is, is above board. You can see what's happening, you work it out. You'll explore and you'll have your team against the aliens. Um, this is what got Julian Gollop the chance to make XCOM UFO Defense, which was a an enormously popular game that keeps being remade and rediscovered. And there's actually some good uh, remakes of it come out recently. Uh, Microprose, who um, famously made very in-depth strategy games, uh, approached Julian uh, to, to do something with Laser Squad and turn it into XCOM. Um, but they wanted it to be much more in-depth, so they ended up allocating him staff to do it, and that's where we, that's where we got XCOM from. So this is uh, the, um, the CPC cassette multi-loader one with this tiny little manual that used to belong to Daryl Smith in um, West Yorkshire and Huddersfield. Uh, it's a 50 page manual and a single multi-loader tape. The other, game, the other game I think is better than Laser Squad but most people don't know about it in the same way as they do with Laser Squad because you didn't get XCOM from it. This game, Lords of Chaos, is kind of a sequel to another game he did on the Spectrum. We've got the pillar called in this Chaos. Game. And with Chaos, you just had a single screen and you had eight wizards and they all had spells they could do. They could summon creatures and then use the creatures to attack and so on. Lords of Chaos is the same with, with specific scenarios. Um, here is uh, the game there. Uh, another tiny little manual and lots of information in it. And it goes up to 32. Which Easter egg did I miss? I saw the dog. I saw the pillock in the game. Did I miss another one? Let's go back. Uh, the game there. Uh, another tiny single screen. And you had eight wizards. And they all had spells they could do. They could summon creatures. and then oh, We've got Andrew D down there. Use the creatures to attack and so on. Lords of Chaos is the same with, with specific scenarios. Um, here is... Uh, the game there, uh, another tiny little manual, and lots of information in it, and it goes up to 32 pages. Um, and it's one of the first games to actually be launched with its own DLC that I can remember. There was an expansion available from the start that's actually mentioned at the back of the of the manual that you can send off for the expansion there. Expansion kit 1, there was only one made. Um, Lords of Chaos is similar to Laser Squad, except you only have one character in it, and that's your wizard. Now, you can choose how many, how much mana ha he has, what his physical attributes are, so he can go out Trevor and battle the himself. <laughs> um, but he also can create potions, <laughs> he and he can summon a range of different creatures with varying abilities. And the, the, the key thing in this is to build up a wizard and understand how to use his ability. <laughs> and here we have the famous Craig, a.k.a. Cragger, in centre parks, surrounded by crocodiles, of course. Uh, as best as you can, 
in a limited number of turns to defeat the enemy and grab all the treasure. Lords of Chaos didn't ever see a game <laughs> like um, XCOM getting made from it in the 90s, which was unfortunate because it, 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 I think it was even better than Laser Squad. Uh, Laser Squad came from another game called Rebel Star. I was going to raise this. I was going to raise this with Asnivore because I think Asnivore I've watched streaming Rebel Star on Twitch. Um, and I couldn't remember if... Well, you're, you're just telling me, aren't you, that this came before Laser Squad? Which I hope when it comes to the R game... Oh, Gizmo, what, what? She's shouting at me and scratching me. What? Come on, get on your chair. Hang on, I just need to sort the cat out. Come on. Come on. There you go. She's on her chair now. She's a very vocal cat, so she just shouts at everything. All right, you're going to settle down. Yeah? Okay. She needs an awful lot of attention. <laughs> right, let's continue. ...that someone does uh, Rebel Star. Um, but th these two games are absolutely fantastic. I still think they hold up. They're very difficult to get to get uh, an understanding of initially, and the graphics aren't particularly good, but they're tremendous, tremendous games. They've got a board game quality to them. Uh, and you notice that Lemmings was here as a start. Lemmings is fantastic. This is my favourite Lemmings one. Oh, no more Lemmings. That I thought they good. turned their stride. That I think they went. They tried too hard with tribes. But they're absolutely fantastic games. But if you haven't played Lemmings in two players, I would I would urge you to play it. And even those are the, the, the these Atari him. ST ones, I would urge you to play Lemmings on the dreaded Amiga because two players can use two mice for it and you can fall out with your closest friends on it. <laughs> um, that's all from me for today. Thank you very much. I'll put you back to Neil in the studio, who I'm assured has some really good stuff for you next. Thank you, Dave. A seamless transition back to the studio. Um, as always, Dave, I agree with you. Only More Lemons was great. Tribes was still a very good game, but it veered a little bit away from just the pure gameplay of the earlier ones and started to introduce all of these other elements, all of the tribes, and all of the different tribes had different skills. And it didn't really need to go that well. I don't know. They, they obviously had to do something a bit different. But um, it lost something for me. But Lemmings and Oh No More Lemmings, brilliant. Bit of Christmas Lemmings. Um, by no means a bad game. I still don't understand. what What is a cube of meat? Is this a Scottish thing? Cubes of meat? Is this how you eat consume your meat um, no measuring devices today Dave but we did get a manual count and some good centre parks action so thank you Scottish sausage meat a Scottish cows sorry Scottish pigs square boxed haggis <laughs> You stick it inside another cube of meat. Okay, I'm none the wiser. Oh, we're doubling up on the music there, sorry. Squassage. Our next L game comes from... Oh, it's more lemmings. It's more lemmings from uh, Fair Fight 14 at the Retro Box Room. Let's see what he's got. Lemmings, small collection here, but this lot isn't the one I want to talk to you about. This version. Get ready. Lemmings Revolution. Lemmings 3D, it's not, but it is, because it's in 3D, but it's not the Lemmings 3D version. What I find interesting, though, is the cover that we got here in the Show UK. The money! This is the American Couldn't version. press that one. <laughs> but the American version of the same game. Is what we got in America. But what I find even more interesting is the specifications. Why are the minimum specifications for your PC so different? Anybody know? P2 364 anyway, meg. Back over to Neil. <laughs> okay, let's pause it there. So, um, USA 98 XP. Yeah, we can go 95 on the UK version. Pentium 2 300, Pentium 166. Um, 64 meg, 32 meg. 5 megabytes of free disk space, 450 megabytes of free disk space. 4-speed CD-ROM in the USA, but a 24-speed CD <laughs> in the US. Uh, and 4 meg graphics, 8 meg. I mean, I guess the main difference is this is system requirements. 
and this is minimum requirements so this is um, perhaps recommended but then the recommended is lower than the minimum so that makes no sense only in certain aspects like less RAM no there's absolutely no logic there whatsoever um, yep baffling I guess unless there's something else in the game itself but it's just lies says Castardo it's all lies Next up, we are going to take a quick break from the L games for Chris's Transformers Collection. Unique Outdoors, it's Chris here again. I'm Hello, sharing Chris. with you a passion from uh, when I was a child. As a wee young boy, when I used to get up before 7 o'clock or 9 o'clock for the Wide Awake Club or Christmas Day. The Wide Awake Club. excited to watch the latest adventures of the Transformers. Wow. And this was an absolute major pocket money consumption uh, for myself. Tad um, quiet. Let me knock it up in OBS for you. Uh, let's give Chris... Eight. Checkpoint. Oh, eh, checkpoint. Eight decibels. And I have spent. Oh, I used to get ten pound uh, pocket money every Saturday. Thought and you'd like I this, had Alan. To spend every single penny of it. I couldn't save it for two weeks to buy a bigger or better toy. I had to spend all of it at once. Uh, if only I'd been a bit more self-controlled and was able to be more sensible with money. I might well be in a better place financially now as well, but hey ho. So this is my collection of Transformers, as you can see. Um, this is actually better stored than it used to be. I used to store it in one of those free suitcases that used to come with your catalogue subscription. Um, so now we have some very classic retro Transformers, which are potentially some I've seen bad days. He's missing his um, head weapon because it's bombshell. Yeah, anyway, yeah, kind of like my memory's faded. Two and a half planes were bits are missing. Should we see? I've tried some of them and it's not worked. Are you Decepticon or an Autobot? And you got to rub the sticker, haven't tell you? Us which, and you, you are. Hologram. Ooh. Oh, no, nothing. <laughs> That's a Decepticon anyway. So we've got quite a few Transformers there. If you ask me what the names are now, not a clue. There's a few of them. Like Metroplex. Don't know who that is. Everyone Don't know knows who that Optimus is. Prime. The good old Voltrons. Brilliant. Uh, headless Headmaster. <laughs> and, yeah, so that's why I think. Um, at my local video shop, I used to rent this. Uh, and I was pretty much the only person renting it to the point where my parents realised that it actually I might be cheaper just to buy them with VCR for my birthday. So, I got that. And I still think it is a fantastic artwork for the cover of it. So it's not complete with just uh, the VCR. I had the, the comics and the annuals. I actually started collecting the comics from when issue 30 and I was very disappointed um, that for some reason I, I wasn't able to get it until issue 30 so this tiny stack is a near complete collection of the Transformers comics I'm not going to get them all out they're all well they're not individually bagged I've got plastic bags with about 50 or so comics in each but it ran on to 300 Matt, 400 don't, comics I don't know what you're quoting there yeah, Matt so also retro Tesco bag there you go um one last thing, the whole retro VCR down there, my trusty Iowa FX 2800. I don't know why I've kept it, not going to watch that on VCR. Make a good point, Got Grant. Blue of it now, so what the heck. And yeah, um, these are my masterpiece. I think they're called masterpiece. I remember picking that up for about £50 in <laughs> Toys R Us. This one, um, I believe I imported. Been a while. Don't remember. Hang on, he can't really see very well, can he? Right. Oh, 
them up. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, and these ones I also imported. Revol Tech. Very poseable. Very cool. They don't transform, so not really true to the name, but. Ah, that's the intergalactic greeting. And really. So, anyway, thanks for joining me in my Transformers collection. Thank you. Maybe I should have saved that for tea for Transformers, but um, it's a lovely collection. You know, I keep seeing you guys showing me your toy collections, and they sit so well next to a retro computer collection. And I had Transformers as a kid. As a kid. I had Transformers, I had He-Man, I had the A-Team toys. I must not get sucked into wanting to buy these, because if I buy one, I'm going to have to buy them all, aren't I? No. You guys are a bad influence on me. <laughs> if it fits today, you can just use the French translation. Le Transformers. <laughs> Our next video comes from Aidan down in New Zealand, who gave us his room tour recently. He's probably all tuckered up in bed right now so uh, when you do get around to watching this Aiden, thank you for sending this in let's see what he's got Landstock of the Treasures of King Knoll is an isometric action RPG released for the Sega Mega Drive in 1992 here's my original boxed copy <laughs> it's not even me doing the air horn you play as a 90 year old elf called Nigel the game opens with a very Indiana Jones inspired cutscene of you retrieving the statue of Gypta from some ruins. Flogging it off for an absolute ton of coin, ah, you're assaulted like by a foul mouthed wood nymph called Friday, who's being chased by three maniacs who wanted to guide them to the fabled treasures of King Knoll. Too loud. Not that down. You sorry. and your new tiny friend escape the thieves by hiding behind a bush. Some good music in this game. And then you set out to claim the treasure for yourselves. Look at him just, just standing there on the back of the bird. <laughs> the adventure takes you through dungeons, villages of cute little red bears, villages of less cute little yellow bears who don't like the red guys. Oh boy, things just got serious, didn't they? At any rate, you save the kid, fix the curse that turned the yellow bears into jerks, then you find a lighthouse, beat up some thieves, get a clue, meet a rich guy, fight a wizard, get locked in a dungeon, run around a giant hedge maze, all on your surprisingly long quest to find a pile of gold that makes Scrooge's money bin look like pocket change. The game is absolutely enormous and will take you ages to complete. Fun fact, the original Japanese version was absolutely stuffed full of innuendo. You could visit a brothel, read a naughty magazine, wear a sexy bunny costume, and find a g-string as an item. Mercifully, all these naughty things were removed on translation for our gentle western sensibilities, Aww. including a scene where you take a bath with one of the baddies. English translations had a maid planted firmly in front of the door, making it impossible to view the scene, which was otherwise translated and left in the game for some Good Lord. I thought Leisure Suit Larry was going to be the filthiest anyway, game Land today. Stalker is one of my favourite Mega Drive games and has been for nearly 30 years. It was fun back in the day and it's fun now. It's included on the Mega Drive Mini, so if you've got one of those, be sure to check it out. Anyway, Oscar says hello. Hello, Oscar. And this is Aiden <laughs> signing off. Back to you in the studio, Neil. <laughs> when did this back to you in the studio start happening? Um, it's a great looking game, isn't it? Uh, I had that down as a SNES game, but it's a Mega Drive game. Um, that really appeals to me. And there are a few of you in the chat saying you want to give that a go. You know, uh, JRPGs can be very serious things and very hard to break through into. This instantly looks like it's got lots of humour. I like the look of this. Dave, you totally started the back to the studio thing. Um, and let's give Aiden some credit for the editing. I mean, that could have been a YouTube video in its own right. Thank you, Aiden. Great effort. Aiden wonderfully told me when we were talking about Barbarian the other day. He told me on Discord that um, Wolf from Gladiators in the UK, um, a.k.a the big scary man in the barbarian poster next to the woman with the, the big bazookas moved 30 meters from his parents house in New Zealand from England and opened a gym there so when he goes to meet his parents he can pop into the gym and see Wolf from Gladiators 
pretty cool. Says he's about 68 years old now, but still stacked. Not surprised, to be honest. Melons, thank you. Um, that was the word I was looking for. Melons. Hello, my learned friend. Next up, it's Pixels at Dawn. Let's see what he's got. Hello again, everyone. Hello. It's Pixels at Dawn here. So it's L Day. It is. It's well, an hell of a day. could we go to other than hey. fantastic <laughs> learnings from Psygnosis and DMA Design? A lovely, I'm a big fan of box art. And look at this box art, it's fantastic. So much detail. A lot going on. A car, it's almost I like Where's Wally, isn't it? Running, to be quite honest. But it is absolute classic. Um, probably one of the one of the better games on the on the Amiga and every platform under the sun <laughs> is also true. Let's have a quick look inside, shall we? Nice uh, Psygnosis logo on the uh, inner sleeve there. And we have... <laughs> Who'd have thought it, Grant? A nice uh, <laughs> disc one and disc two. Also works in Australasia, so <laughs> that's okay then. Uh, let's put that to one side. Um, oh, you've got to have the level I don't know codes. who owned this before I owned it, but they do have all of the <laughs> Fleming's code scribbled out on a bit of paper, as you do. So if, you, if anyone's stuck and is unable to use the internet, in which case, how are you watching this? Um, now you can <laughs> uh, get to some of the later levels, if you really want to. <laughs> We have the lovely uh, complete Lemmings manual as well. Looks uh, looks very nice. Nice uh, pastel blue colour there. So it's got it's quite a nice manual actually. As a lot of manuals at those times were. It's got a little uh, little cartoon explaining what the, the, the different Lemmings do. Adam Zwack, to play. thank you for the subscription. Um, it's a uh, it's a lovely little. I don't one, think actually. I had the original. I, I think I had a like copy it. version. So I never got to see that then, yeah. manual. Oh, and we also have the registration card. So I better send that off to Psygnosis to make sure that I can keep informed of future products or something, <laughs> probably. Yeah. There you go. That's the address if you want to send anything to Ah, uh, my learned friend. <laughs> Leander yes, so that's is a game that I was thinking of that hasn't and, been uh, mentioned. Just as a, a small bonus. Hello, Vincent. Uh, let's just put that there. Let's also have a visit from a... The uh, the guys themselves. <laughs> nice, uh, nice lemming, and a uh, and a blocker, and uh, descending from the uh, the heavens, we have a uh, got an umbrella, a floater, uh, oh, it's not in frame, a miner there, and of course, <laughs> where would we be without the builder <laughs> to make all those bridges to get us over those hazardous chasms? Did you Thanks make to, uh, them pixels? Tim from the Future is 8-Bit. Oh, who, uh, Tim. Put me in contact or, or, or uh, negotiated the terms to, for me to get these off a, a friend of his. Okay. Um, really nice stuff. That all <laughs> Tim hooked you up. Hung up around my Amiga at all times now. So uh, that's good stuff. So there you go. L day. See you soon. Thank you. And we should also mention what Dave said when he was showing us Lemmings. Uh, Ian Z, thank you for the subscription. Um, Dave mentioned that you can play Lemmings two-player using two mice and if you've never done this before give it a go even if it's through emulation give it a go because lemmings becomes a completely different game when you're going head to head with two mice you're not just trying to complete the level you're trying to block the other player so you're digging holes where you want their lemmings to fall through while not affecting the route of your own lemmings both trying to get to the same exit it's a completely different game and it gets brutal and friendships are destroyed playing it so it's well worth going back and playing Lemmings 2 player. Next up it's Rob. Oh, we got a Bond card do we think? Let's see what Rob's got for us. Evening, Cave Dwellers. Good evening. Well, can you guess what game I've chosen for the letter of the day, Clap Clap? Live and Let Die. Oh, well, here it is. It's the Living Daylight Living on the Commodore 64. Close. Um, <laughs> this was also released on the Amstrad and the Spectrum, and the Spectrum also bundled it with a James Bond pack 
uh, which bizarrely came with a light came gun. Came with a light gun, yeah. Um, I'm not entirely sure the game uses a light gun like Operation Wolf, because basically you're, you're controlling James Bond, um, who's running left to right, and then you have to stop and shoot targets in the background, um, you know, appearing from doorways and behind rocks. Um, yeah, so in between each level, uh, you get to, se to select uh, either a gadget or a weapon. That's as loud as it goes. For the following level. And uh, there's only certain quiet. weapons you can use. Uh, now, you, you don't know what you need until you've played the level. So basically, uh, the second level, you have to choose night vision you goggles your volume so you up, can Reece. see um, the, the bad guys and make sure you don't like, accidentally shoot civilians. Um, so yeah, so obviously, uh, you need to know what gadget you need to select before you play the level. Um, anyway, that's enough uh, waffling from me. But have you ever wondered what volume a Commodore 64 game is? Well, volume. let's find out. So we measure the width. So that's uh, 11 centimetres. The length, 14 centimetres. And the depth, let's just say two centimetres. Oh, right, Jesus. Let's have a look. 11 times 14 uh, times two. This is up there with the mechanical so there you go. tape 308 measure. 308 cubic centimetres. And that's the, uh, <laughs> the living daylights. Now, uh, if you don't mind... I'm just going to go on here. <laughs> night, everyone. Good night. Um, shampoo, not something I have a need for, but if I did, it would be this one for sure. And also, did you hear my uh, text message come through there on my Nokia? <laughs> on my old school phone. Beep, beep. My learned friend, the email address is retromancave at gmail.com. Thank you, Richard. A built-in calculator and a tape measure. What next? Lasers? Honestly, incredible. It's our good friend Tim next. This is a game changer. Look at the size of it. Look at the girth on that. 30 meters, 100 feet. 13 mil wide. Brace yourselves. Hello, Tim here. Hello, Tim here. Letter L. It's an L of a day. L is also long, and um, yeah, I just happened to have this little tape measure knocking about 30 meters. So, um, yeah, maybe there's a challenge for somebody to find an even longer one. <laughs> Quite handy for measuring out stuff in the garden. All that reminds me of is school. That is a school tape measure. That is a sports day tape measure. But, um, yeah. Yes, was no good, keyboards so were harmed in the jump. making of this video, by the way. I do have a spare set of Amiga keys. And, um, yeah, I just thought it would be nice to have them to remind me of the letter. Um, so I've picked a, what I think is a really great game. came out on the GameCube, and it is The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Walker. Okay, yeah, we are allowing the dropping of the thes. So Legend of Zelda, The Wind Walker. Uh, double L, limited edition. <laughs> And yeah, the Alpha Legend. Nearly clap time. Oh, it and, is. Um, oh, sorry, everyone. Yes, Thursday night, clap for the NHS here in the UK. So we're going to have to take a five minute or, yeah, two or three minute breather to go out and clap. We'll be back in a couple of minutes, okay? Thanks for reminding me.
I do apologise, I left you with double the music. Sorry about that. Let's get our breaths back. God save the Queen and all that. I said to my sister, who's a nurse, the other day, I said, I went out and I clapped for you, sister. I appreciate everything you do, all the hard work you put in, putting your life at risk in, in this pandemic. She said, Neil, I'm on maternity leave for a year. I'm doing this at all. <laughs> right, I should probably pay more attention. Yeah, out of breath now. <laughs> But speaking of families, um, yeah, awkward. Speaking of families, uh, I received a, a cake in the post today from my mother. She sent me a fruit cake and some sticky brownies, which was really nice. She lives down in the New Forest, which is uh, miles away from me. So there's no way she could even leave it on the doorstep or anything. That was a nice thing to come home to. Yes, Craig. Hello, sir. So let's get back to, um, uh, you also received a TV tuner, I did receive a TV tuner from you Craig and you are getting a card in return and I said I'd put something else in the box for you and I can't remember what that was now, what am I sending you? Remind me please. Ah, <laughs> there's a, there's a Sue in the chat, hello Sue. Right let's pick up where we got to, um, which was me drinking beer and Tim telling us about the Legend of Zelda. So let's knock that down. Hadouken! Let's go. Actually, it was divided opinions when it came out. I think it got very good critical reviews, but a lot of people were not entirely happy with the art direction, the cell shaded. Um, but actually, the floppy drive. Nintendo that's it. Thanks, right, Craig. And they got it right um, because it had an evil wind is blowing. Right, um, because. It has aged very, very well. so often does in Tim's house. And um, I particularly like this edition that I bought at the time that it came out because uh, it comes along with a nice little bonus disc which um, has the two N64 games on it. So um, you get to play those on your GameCube too. So good value. Uh, in fact, I guess it's such a great game that uh, Nintendo re-released it on the Wii U in HD format. So uh, <laughs> even prettier. And... Um, and a great success. And I hear that um, on the GameCube version, uh, that the GameCube is emulated so well now that you can play it very well on the PC. Has anyone tried that? As you might say, it's an hell of a game. Yay. If you've not tried it, which would surprise me, but if you haven't, give it a whirl. I will see you mm, for M. M, yes. M. Start thinking about your M games. Hmm... M for mother, no doubt, or whatever it was called in the UK. M4, Mech Warriors. M4, Masters of the Universe, that awful game. Dolphin is the emulator. Yeah, and no doubt you can scale up the resolution on the GameCube through emulation to pretty much look like um, a Switch. The game may be missing some features may have a few less polygons, but I must give it a go. M for Monster Joysticks. Thank you, Mumbo. <laughs> so, uh, now Mumbo is going to tell me that I haven't played his game. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the email. I'm going to look for Mumbo. Assuming you emailed it to me, Mumbo. Oh my good lord. My mailbox is is rammed full of submissions. Wow, we've got loads of letter L's that have come in late. Okay, uh, how do we deal with this? Let's see if we've got pictures first. Okay, we've got pictures. Okay, Dana has sent this in. It's another Legacy of Cain, which we saw earlier. She starts with first, the somewhat obscure one, Legacy of Cain Soul Reaver, a cult classic through and through and a cinematic masterpiece far ahead of its time, full voice acting, better than much of what we saw even through the next generation or two. 
a deep, dark Shakespearean narrative. Metroidvania-style gated progression through an open 3D environment. And incredible dynamic music that shifts seamlessly with the action on screen. It also has one of the best dimension-shifting mechanics I've ever seen in a game as you traverse through the material and spectral planes. This shifting is beautifully represented by the lenticular cover of the PS1 release, which I have here. I did try to film it, but the camera was struggling to focus, so I had to settle for a couple of photos instead. Yeah, it's really hard to, re to film that kind of thing. So um, obviously the cover, sort of, does it move slightly as you, as you turn it? Is that what happens? M for <laughs> Mun Click Print. <laughs> the, uh, Alan says that the uh, French voice acting on the game is hilarious. It's so delightfully over the top. It was a good Horace mug. <laughs> I wonder where you got it from. It warps like you're shifting through dimensions. Awesome. Okay, uh, what was I? I was in the mailbox, wasn't I? I've closed the mailbox back into the mailbox. So guys, on Monday, you've got all weekend to get your M, M games in. Loads of time. Was has sent in... Oh, a video. So let's get that downloading. Can I play it on the screen? Yeah, let's play it. Let's play it straight up. I too like to live dangerously. Here's Woz's video. Uh, play. Hello cave dwellers. Well, today I'm going for The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Woz does like his Edge magazine, as we discovered when he gave us a room tour. For Nintendo 64, as uh, Edge magazine from back in uh, Christmas 1998, where I read the review uh, ahead of playing the game. And what really stuck out for me Look how organised this is. Post it there to go straight to the right page. Was well, the game looked fantastic? These really nice screenshots, and what you got with the N64? M Games Grant M M for Macho Macho Man. A bit blurry, but you know what you saw in the magazine was what you were playing. There, there was no enhancement here, no sneaky up, upscaled graphics. The world was huge, a lot of fun to enjoy, and obviously that time travel element was just a fantastic inclusion. And uh, yeah, the big selling factor for me was that this was the first time I saw Edge do a 10 out of 10, or give 10. it a 10 out of 10 for a game. So this went on my must-have list. And uh, here we go, I've got a box copy here. Really nice black packaging, kind of reminiscent of those NES black black boxes. I too had this Again, one. Again, some really cool screenshots. I remember this one really blew me away. I had this smoke effect, so you could imagine them moving. And Temple of Time as well. They're brilliant. So let's have a look inside. See, see what you got. Yes, Ben. Great choice. So I got mine in complete condition. So, still, there's a little baggie there, the cartridge. And you've got, you got the manual there. Nice colour manual, full of all the cool weaponry, the upgrades you could get, the armour, the attacks, and the spinning attacks. This has been really cool to pull off once you, once you master the controls. I remember trying to play it without reading the manual and I Very did nice. have to go back and read it. Oh yeah, it looks like 40 pages in total. Despite the notes. on-screen tutorials. Cool manual. Also in a box. you just got some little health and safety flyers, registration card. Nice <laughs> to still have them. Epilepsy warnings. And also a little flyer. Just telling you what else was out at the time. You've on the Game Boy. It's funny, isn't it, that when the N64 came out, the the original Game Boy, albeit re-released different colours and all the rest of it, was still the thing. Um, Tetris Plus, Donkey Kong Land 3, Wario Land 2, Street Fighter 2, 
on the, well Game Boy Color, isn't it? Game Boy Color over here. But it was still, you know, pretty primitive stuff. We hadn't gone on to the, the uh, Game Boy Advance or anything. Or the N64 itself. Okay. So with my N64, I had Super Mario 64. I had GoldenEye. I had Mario Kart. Um, and I had Zelda. I think that was it. And it's, it's amazing even now. I... Oh, I had Wave Race 64 as well. I felt like I played a lot of titles at the time. Uh, Diddy Kong. Uh, bought my N64 with uh, Shadows of the Empire there. Uh, Cruising World. I think I played that in the arcade. Yeah, that was on the Ultra 64 arcades, wasn't it? And supposedly that was what the console was going to be like. So that and um, there was a fighting game, wasn't there? Primal Rage, I think it was, that ran on the same hardware. So this was teasing us. This was what we were going to be able to have in our homes wasn't quite the same and to be honest those arcade machines they weren't that impressive um yeah they were 3d but they didn't stand up to some of the other 3d hardware at the time um at least i, I wasn't that impressed with cruising world in the arcades yeah pretty bad there as well um golden eye obviously and um, super mario 64 definitely but there was quite a few i hadn't tried to this day so it's always cool seeing screenshots killer instinct that was that's not primal rage it was killer instinct wasn't it that was a good game in the arcades. Things you haven't you haven't got around to playing. No doubt, so helped to sell a lot more games by including that. So inside the baggie, obviously, was a cartridge. It was really weighty, weighty cartridge. Oh, do we have to start weighing games as well as measuring them? So it's always cool seeing oh. screenshots of things you haven't. Sorry, you haven't that was my fault. Weighty cartridge. <laughs> weighty cartridge. That classic grey. Oh, something else in there. Oh, that's not supposed to be there. So what was cool is that in the game, Ocarina of Time, you got to play the Ocarina. And I remember he mapped the ocarina notes to the C buttons. And do you remember, none of us knew what an ocarina was until The Legend of Zelda, or Zelda 64. <clears throat> um, yeah, suddenly, we all knew what they were. They started appearing in schools, and everyone started buying them, and they, they replaced for a while the recorder, the traditional recorder, as the instrument in schools. That was how popular this thing was. This is really cool. You had to kind of memorise different tunes. That would do things like change between night and day or travel through time or call your horse a pona. but I remember that just being a nice touch at the time nothing else had done quite the same and also introduced a Z, Z targeting Z targeting and that was just, uh, the first step of uh, targeting and locking on your enemies in games that I remember and you'd lock on you'd be able to dance around the enemies and just it, it, it was just the perfect way to fight in a 3D space. Like enough to have an issue 200 of Edge. Well, I wasn't still in school by that point, but all across the press I was reading, it was all about the ocarinas. Cheer. Um, it's back when the magazine turned 200, and it did uh, 200 covers. And uh, yeah, I've got myself the, the limited edition link cover here. Bit of a benefit of working at future that one. <laughs> but what's nice is that in 2009, oh, not my trip. Let's get back a bit. In 2009, you know, a good, a good sort of nine years later, you know, Ocarina One made it to a top one spot in their top 100 games. So number one spot, which is great. So for me to this day, it still remains one of my favourite games of all time. So many sort of cool characters. <laughs> Pete. <laughs> they either meet or fight along the way. And I never actually played uh, the sequel Majora's Mask. But people love that one just as much. So maybe I need to track that down. Yeah, fantastic game. And uh, yep, yeah, that's my choice for, for today. Thanks Thank for watching. Was. Thank you. Hang on a sec. Oh, there's more. Isn't it? <laughs> Coffee up now.
<laughs> it's a first. It's a first. Dust in Wazzy's room. <laughs> Bring in the containment oh, team. <laughs> yeah, here we go. <laughs> Very good, Was. <laughs> um, Grant says, I wonder how many kids wanted to, Trekkie kids wanted to learn the penny whistle because of Picard playing one. Um, yeah, so my memories of Zelda 64 are very good, um, but at first it was disappointment, and I'll tell you why. Because um, I had bought into the hype of the N64. I was reading about it in Edge magazine and all the rest before it came out, and I was seeing these pictures of Zelda 64 um, and a horse and rolling hills that looked like they went on forever. They made it look like these hills went on miles and miles and miles and maybe they did on the um, 64 um, disk system which had more storage space maybe they did um, and they had to cut it down for the cartridge so when I first got on the horse on Zelda it's like right let's go and explore this massive land and actually it was one fairly small field <laughs> it wasn't this huge land um, so initially there was a bit of disappointment and then the mechanics as, as was explained the story, the game, just totally hooked me in, and it was it was brilliant, regardless of that. Um, and of course, the cartridge meant loading times were minimal. So even though you had transitions between zones, it was very quick and seamless in travelling between them. So it was all good. What else have we got? We're going through the mailbox, aren't we? Um. <laughs> I've got an email saying uh, paid promotion for Retro Man Cave Raid Shadow Legends do I <laughs> do I want to put an advert on my videos for Raid Shadow Legends no I think that can go straight in the bin thank you as much as I appreciate an opportunity I don't think you guys would appreciate that so Dana sent some more images in Oh, and this follows on really nicely from what we've just seen. Let me just bring them up for you. It's more Zelda. As a bonus, she says, um, I thought I'd also take a moment to share the collection of my personal all-time favourite series, The Legend of Zelda. At least everything I could find for the photos. There's certainly some more things here which I've forgotten and couldn't fit in. All of the Zelda, we've got some promotional discs there as well. These are nice. Are these, are these books? I think these are books. Art and Artifact, Hydral Historia. Can't read that one, but um, very nice. Got a Wii controller over there, a gold Wii controller. Some figurines, different styles. I mean, they're not, they, they, they haven't been scared, have they, Nintendo, in just completely changing the style of Zelda from 3D to cell shaded 3D, you know. They were pretty uh, hashtag brave and it worked. Zelda chess set. Oh, okay, we've gone back to the previous pictures. That's what we've got up to. Thank you, Dana. Let's see what else we've got. Daniel has sent us in some pictures. Not just lemmings, lemmings on the CD TV. Now, there's a version I've never played. And there's a version uh, <laughs> there's a version which I think can you imagine playing that on the infrared controller on the CD TV you're gonna have to plug a mouse in to enjoy that properly although there were versions on you know plenty of consoles that didn't have a mouse but you gotta you gotta play it with the mouse yeah pillock you gotta play it with the mouse 
you know, another game that I really love that I played, uh, I think, I think after Lemmings, because I'd moved on to the PC, was a game called The Incredible Machine. Um, kind of similar in that you had a goal and you were left to achieve that goal of your own free will using just the tools that you had at your disposal. The Incredible Machine was a great game. I should have picked that for the eye day. And there's also this. Uh, thank you for the sub, Michael Elsby. Elsey, thank you, sir. Uh, we've got a Lemmings book, The Hypnosis Enigma, <laughs> by Nigel Gross or Gross and John Sutherland. Like puffing books. I didn't know there were Lemmings books. I wonder if they're like choose your own adventure style books. And we've also got the recent Royal Mail stamps that were released which have, uh, if you put a UV light over them, it reveals the words, oh no, on the stamp. We got a little Wookiee there, and a lemming. Uh, Nosh, we made a similar game at Maxis called Marble Drop. Oh, I must check that out. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to write that down. Maybe it's something we can play on the stream. Maybe it's something we can play and you can tell us a little about if you were involved in the making of the game. Marble Drop. Got it. Thank you. Uh, Grant has the Amiga 1200 and an infrared trackball mouse. Ooh. Wireless marble madness all day. Uh, next up we've got Craig. Oh, it's Mumbo. Hello, Mumbo. Right, let's download these pictures because we've got lots of text to read. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> L is for Lego. So, uh, today I've chosen Lego Island, Lego Chess and Lego Racers. Lego Island is considered by many people to be the first Lego game, but it is the only, but it is only the first PC Lego game. There was a Japan exclusive game on the Sega Pico two years before called Lego Fun to Build. Here's the intro to LEGO's YouTube channel along with some more facts. Uh, I better not click on that, but we have got some other pictures. The game features characters voiced by people like John Morris, Andy from Toy Story, June Foray, Rocky from The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle, and David Lander, Squiggy from Laverne and Shirley. The soundtrack is awesome, I recommend. Sadly, Mindscape fired the people working on LEGO Island the day before the launch, so they didn't have to pay them bonuses. That is brutal. There are five playable characters. Pepper Roni, the pizza delivery dude, the dude with the food. Where's he? Uh, where's Pepperoni? Maybe he's not in this picture. Maybe he's that guy with the hook. I don't know why he'd have a hook for a hand. That's probably not him. Um, Mama and Papa Briccolini the owners of Briccolini's Pizzeria, and Nick and Laura Brick, police officers. Each of them has different effects on people and objects on the island, such as changing moods, colours and sounds. You have various missions to do on the island, as those characters, such as pizza delivery, ambulance driving, and building and racing cars around an underground slash underwater racetrack, complete with a giant skeleton, a giant squid, and giant pizzas. Well, I'll take a giant pizza, please. If you do the pizza delivery mission as Pepper, you accidentally free the island's only prisoner, the Brickster, who proceeds to try taking apart the island brick by brick. Let's bring you up another picture. Have we had that one? I think we've had that one. I've got another one here. There we go. Um, Lego Chess is a fun 3D chess game with two storylines, finding treasure in the pirates theme or catching bank robbers in the western theme, with pre-rendered cutscenes depending on the outcome of each round. Sounds a bit like a, a, a battle chess style game. When chess pieces get taken, an in-engine cutscene plays with slapstick antics. Uh, it also has fairly in-depth tutorial where you are taught how to play chess by the Lego Chess King himself and a nice MIDI soundtrack. Lego Racers is a great kart racer that allows you to build your own characters and cars and race through circuits in the style of classic Lego themes. Your aim is to beat Rocket Racer and become the greatest Lego racer. For completing each circuit, um, you unlock additional pieces to build your characters and cars with. Floating coloured bricks are power-ups. 
red for something that fires ahead of you, green for boosts, blue for shields and yellow for something that fires behind you. White bricks can be used to increase the power of them. Some people get annoyed by the soundtrack, but I don't. Lego races I've played. Um, yeah, the building your car aspect is really great fun, isn't it? Really like that. Uh, Retro Box Room says, very buggy games if I remember. Um, don't remember having too many problems on the PC. But I didn't play Lego Island and I didn't play Lego Chess. Looks like a nice game. Haven't played it. <laughs> the graphics are so blocky, says Dana. They can kind of get away with it. It's a license, isn't it, to have a low polygon count. Um, and we've got a picture here from Ralph. Let's just get it downloaded. Uh, hello, can I have a picture please, downloader? There we go. No. Bear with, I'm having trouble with the simplest thing in the world downloading a picture. So you know what that means. It's time for MS Paint. There we go. <laughs> uh, Ralph says no comment is just such a pretty thing. L for light phaser. We've got uh, the Sega one. I'm guessing that's Master System I think. And the Sinclair ZX Spectrum one. The kind of thing you would have got with the Bond, the James Bond pack that was mentioned earlier. Um, okay, chat, tell me what games I could have played on a Sega Master System with a light gun. Hit me. These are some serious laser guns, they are. Oh, what a lovely looking pair! I'm waiting for the Master System light gun games. Operation Wolf, okay. Any more? We've got any more Master System? <laughs> one, Operation Wolf. We've had that one. <laughs> yeah, the Cheetah light gun's nice. My favorite is the Commodore 64 red and, uh, the red and gray one. Barbarian? Was that a light gun game? Shooting Gallery, says Richard. Safari Hunt. Uh, Bitter Blitter, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I've received it, thank you. Um, came to my house. So Bitter Blitter sent me a master system and some other bits and bobs. Um, I've transported it to the cave but kept it all in the box with the... Uh, note in it um, so I know exactly who it's from when I properly unpack it and um, make a record of it for when it uh, if it ever appears on video so thank you so much for that uh, really made my week off actually to get that nice little surprise in the post red and grey one is the cheetah one well that's the one that I like I do like that one Okay, let's go back to my inbox. I think we're nearly there. <laughs> uh, oh, Jonathan has followed up his text because earlier on I read out about the Lords of Midnight and he said, sorry, I did mean to attach a picture. So uh, can I zoom in on that? It's not even going to let me zoom in on that. Oh, resize. I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to mess with that. it in paint. <laughs> Luxor the Moon Prince, he stands on the Downs of Shadows. There's Downs, isn't it? Downs of Shadows. Looking south to the Tower of the Moon. Cryptic. What they need? Some freaking laser guns. Make life easier for them, won't it? Pew, 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 there you go. That's how you cheat on a Spectrum game. <laughs> uh, 
And then uh, finally, the last one is from Velociraptor. And he sent me an email which says urgent for diary. And all it says in it was just wanted to say hi. Can you use the horn, please? Just for you, Dave. Any other soundboard requests? <laughs> so, um, thank you so much for all your videos today. Uh, a big thank you to Richard for his charity appeal video, especially that made me guffaw. I wasn't sure what it was, so I had to watch it before the stream just to check what it was, because uh, it clearly wasn't an L game. And I thought, I know just what to do with that. We will see it in. Oh, you want some Babs? Hi, but you got a big one. That's not Babs. <laughs> That's not Babs. That's not Babs. Cheeky monkey. <laughs> Where's Babs? Oh, what a lovely there looking she is. pair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got your fill of the carry on noises. <laughs> Richard, did I get your L game? Did you. Uh, Richard, well, why? Why? Where? Where's the L game? Don't have your L game. Hang on, hang on. We can't. If there's a Richard video, we can't miss out on it. Hmm. I've got Costado's tour. And do you know what? Let's watch it now because we've got such a gap between now and Monday. I was going to save it for Monday, but I think we can watch it now. Oh, it's 11 minutes. It's No, we're going to save that one for Monday, Custardo, if you don't mind. Because uh, I want to... Let's start the stream with that and enjoy it proper, rather than rushing it. If that's okay with you, sir. Uh, Richard has resent his email. Yeah, okay. See if I can play it straight off in the browser. Oh no. We're in the cave again. <laughs> There's too much to take in before I even press play. This is a really old shot of the cave. Because the shelves are pretty empty. They're just... They're too full now. I need to thin them out. We've got the CRT in the box, which I really want to put back in the box. Stone keep there, which I've got here at home. I think it looks better thinned out. Anyway, Izzy Wizzy, let's get busy with uh, Richard. Let's check the volumes, hopefully loud enough. Hello, hey, Twilight. Oh, good God. What are you Hello, doing hey. to me, Richard? Okay. Today. We are going to cover the letter L. And we have some lovely, luscious lovelies to show you today. So, without further ado... I'm scared too, David. I'm scared. Where is this going? Here comes. Oh no! <laughs> You make my cave look better than I do. I need you to come and do some video editing for me. Oh, laser squad. I mean, a few of you have bought these games up already, but it's nice to see it in action. Pop the headlights, there they are. Congratulations! <laughs> is that voice? That voice is in the video, isn't it? 
I'm just hearing this scary voice saying hello cave dwellers in the background. <laughs> Checkpoint. You can't hear it. <laughs> well, thank you, Sue. That wasn't scary at all. Um, if we can take down Elmo, we can take down Sue. You got nothing on us, Sue. <laughs> I think that's a good way to end the stream today. Slightly scared. <laughs> Thank you as always, Richard, for your <laughs> tremendous submissions. So tomorrow is a public holiday here in the UK. I will be in the garden, uh, drinking some beer, not going near anyone, responsibly partying. We've, we've put bunting, we've put the Union Jacks up. So that's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. Quiz night, Saturday night, 8 p.m. BST. Be there. <laughs> got some great rounds. I'll do another mashup music round as you seem to enjoy it so much. I've got some other ideas for some crazy rounds for future quizzes, but I'll keep that under wraps. I think we love Richard, says Mad Pete. <laughs> be responsible, don't drink cause. Okay, I'll get the Pims and I'll get myself a bottle of whiskey. Oh yes, the mashups are back. Does anyone want to hear a mashup before we go? Just uh, no, it gets copyright claim, won't it? Yeah, I've got to do it on Twitch. Sorry, but we mashed up Bonnie Tyler with the theme tune to Halo. We mashed up Eminem with the soundtrack of uh, Commando. There's more. There's more on Saturday for the quiz. So 8 p.m. Twitch.tv forward slash The Retro Man Cave. Saturday, Dave. Saturday. There's no vlog tomorrow because of the public holiday. So your next game letter is the letter M for um, Mike. That's the uh, proper word, isn't it? M for Mike, M for November. M for Mike on Monday. M for Monday. <laughs> M for Monday. That's easier. M for Monday. Email retromancave at gmail.com. Something nice and obvious in the subject to let me know what it is. Thank you, Pixels. Uh, and uh, I will get them all downloaded and I, uh, I expect we'll probably have a bumper episode on Monday. Tomorrow, I have a retro tea break to record at 11am with, if Pillock's still around, Pillock, you chose the game Jet Strike on the Amiga, didn't you, the other day? It was called Jet Strike, wasn't it? So I'm speaking to Aaron Fothergill, or Fothergill, Fothergill. Who wrote the game? So that'll be a fun tea break. If you've got any questions you want me to ask him, drop me a DM on the old um, Discord. He's done a lot more besides, but that just reminded me that you'd chosen that game the other day. Uh, this week's video has been intense. I've been working so hard on this week's video. It's not going to get finished until last thing on Friday, but we're, we're going to get there. We've got controller Reese from the chat is a voice in the video. So we'll give him a little shout out on the RMC channel main. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not going to spoil the video. I'm just really looking forward to sharing it with you because it's one of those videos that perhaps rewrites the history books a little bit. Been some good uh, research and digging to get to the bottom of something. So I hope you'll enjoy that. Um, patrons will get it next Thursday. Uh, and as always, if you want to support the channel, patreon.com forward slash retro man cave, chuck some money in the hat and it would be very much appreciated. If not, I just appreciate you hanging out and chatting. Thank you everyone. And uh, it's time to wave goodbye. Bye bye. He's waving. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Pete. I hope you're waving.
Oh, a lovely looking pear. <laughs>